third presentation, and this is by Dr. Rutgers. Uh, he's a principal oh. investigator for Amaro's clinical trial and a surgical oncologist, which is why he's up early in the morning, um, at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. Uh, the, uh, the abstract is radiotherapy of, or surgery of the axilla after a positive sentinel node in breast cancer patients, 10 years follow-up results from the ERTC Amaro's trial. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kaklamani. Yes, it's a pleasure and honor to present uh, the results, the 10 years results of the AMROS trial. AMROS stands for after mapping of the axilla radiotherapy or surgery. It has nothing to do with bitter because AMROS is in Italian. Dr. Dicenzi means bitter, but it's a sweet trial. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you will understand this later on why I think so. So this is the AMROS trial and it is the most important uh, uh, role of mine in this trial, of me in this trial, was find out this acronym. Um, so uh, I have no disclosures, and the background uh, probably you all know what the central node biopsy is. Uh, you know, the central node is the, uh, the lymph node most likely to harbor the metastasis, and uh, these lymph nodes can be identified during surgery by using tracers, either radioactive or color tracers. And these nodes are most likely to harbor the cancer cells from the primary tumor through the lymph vessels. And the standard paradigm is if the central node is clean or only containing minimal disease, there is no further axillary surgery indicated. And if there is cancer, complete axillary surgery. And this is associated with side effects, uh, um, predominantly uh, lymphedema. Uh, we had, in, in the 90s, uh, done a couple of trials where we randomized between surgery and radiation therapy in patients with clinical unsuspicious lymph nodes in the axilla. It's before the central node era, and there it turns out it was smaller trials that radiotherapy appears to be um, an, an equivalent to, to the surgery. So this, uh, this trial started in uh, 2001 were for patients with invasive breast cancer between five millimeter and five centimeters. Uh, clinically note negative, either by palpation or ultrasound, and were scheduled for bre breast conservation or mastectomy, and any age, and of course, informed consent. These patients were randomized to either axillary clearance or radiotherapy before we done the central node biopsy, because one, we want to prevent selection bias if we did it afterwards, and we, were, we had the information of central node biopsy Afterwards, then doctors may think, okay, this is not a patient for the trial. This is, I want to treat them anyway. So to prevent selection bias. And secondly, to enable doctors to do an axillary clearance in the same operation for those patients who were randomized to the uh, axillary clearance uh, by doing a frozen section intraoperatively and patients who were randomized if the central node was positive to clearance, the, we could proceed in the same surgery. So that was the reason. This this system caused some imbalance in, uh, in the number of patients who had uh, axillary clearance and radiotherapy, you will see later. So we started off with 4,800 patients, and one-third of them had a positive central node, and these were randomized between axillary clearance, 744, and radiotherapy, 681, as I alluded to, this small imbalance in, uh, in number of patients. Um, the f in 2013, we had the first five years results, and there was no differences between surgery and radiotherapy. There were very few relapses in the axilla, and there was significant less lymphedema after radiotherapy. So this was the first results, but it was criticism. Uh, there were so few events that the trial was underpowered for its non-inferiority design. We, we needed 52 events, and by then we had 11 events and it would take another 30 years to, get, to come to this 52 events, so we presented as it was, but it was underpowered, but it was clinically very nice for the patients, of course, because there were very few events. The, the other one was, the follow-up is too short, five years, and we have to see a longer follow-up. So in, in itself, results were not universally accepted, not in every country. So now we have the 10 years analysis, and the patient populations we analyzed were those with a positive central node. And the median follow-up is now 10 years, and the uh, cutoff date was at, as of uh, February 2018. With the, uh, regarding the side effects, we have an update of five years because we had 
much more forms at five years, and we don't have forms at 10 years because that was considered too expensive to get uh, all, all these patients the forms at 10 years. So we have a five-year follow-up on lymphedema. The baseline, the age was 56 in both groups, well-balanced, and the grading was well-balanced and as, as, um, as expected, uh, small tumors, 70 millimeter, and 60% uh, of women had a preoperative ultrasound of the axilla, 40% had only clinical palpation. Uh, the vast majority underwent breast, breast conservation because they would have radiotherapy anyway. A small proportion had a mastectomy, and over 90% had any systemic treatment because of the positive single note, uh, either chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or the combination. And the, the radiotherapy to the breast and chest wall was well uh, distributed between the two groups. The number of single notes was also equal in two groups, about two. And the size of the metastasis in the Sandal node was in two-thirds of patients was a so-called macrometastasis and uh, in one-third minor metastasis, minor metastasis. The median number of nodes in those patients who had an axillary clearance was 15. And more interesting, in those uh, lymph nodes in patients who had an axillary clearance next to the positive Sandal node, was one-third, so 33% had more positive nodes in the axilla uh, in those patients who had an axillary clearance. And one expect, of course, the same proportion of node positivity in those patients who had radiation therapy to the axilla. So one could uh, imagine that one-third of the patients who had radiation to the axilla also had positive nodes at primary tre treatment. These are the 10 years results. Nothing happens. So at five years, in the axillary clearance group, four patients out of 744 had um, an axillary first event, and now it's seven. And uh, the radiotherapy group, it's seven patients, and now it's 11. And uh, you can imagine this is not significant difference, and it is, again, extremely low reoccurrence of lymph node metastasis in this group. And of course, it has no effect on disease-free and overall survival, as you may expect. Um, what we've encountered, that there was a small excess of second primaries in the patients who had axillary radiotherapy. And uh, this is, to some extent, in the contralateral breast cancers and on other sites, but in itself, the absolute numbers were very low. Um, we cannot exclude an effect of the radiation therapy to the axilla, but we have to realize that 85% of these patients received radiation therapy anyway because of the breast conservation. So it is, it is for us uh, difficult to see whether the addition of the axillary irradiation field would uh, lead to more second primaries. The side effects, five years, and particularly the lymphedema, and we have clinical observation, we have measurement of lymphedema, and we have the observation of a treatment. And as you can see, the, um, the occurrence of lymphedema in the radiation group was half of that in patients who had um, a, a surgery. And this maintains over the years, as the five years, 20% of patients who had an axillary surgery had signs of lymphedema and treatment of lymphedema as compared to 14% uh, in patients who had uh, uh, radiation therapy. And the clinical observation, it's the same figures. And treatment is even larger difference, but um, in general, patients who get surgery, in general, get initially already more treatment than patients who had radiation therapy. In general, um, in, the, in surgical practice, patients who had an X-ray clearance are sent to the physiotherapist for prevention of lymphedema. So in conclusion, both axillary clearance and radiotherapy provide excellent and comparable local regional controls in patients who have a positive central node in the axilla. After 10 years, there's significantly less lymphedema after radiation therapy to five years, and therefore this can be considered as a standard procedure. And of course, I'm very grateful to the patients and all the coworkers in many hospitals. Thank you. Now, um, my question. So, 
You know, this is now two trials, Z11 and Amarose, although yeah. they are different. Three. Uh, three, you're right. Uh, showing that there really, sh we shouldn't worry too much about clearing the axilla and doing yeah. uh, axillary node dissections. What yeah. do you do in your practice? Um, we mix up the results of the Z11 and the Amarose. That is, if it's limited load involvement and early breast cancer, and of course that's subjective, but we have some cutoffs for that, we do nothing. If the central node is positive, if it's larger tumors, high grade uh, uh, LVI, lymph lymphovascular invas invasion, and there is two positive central nodes, then we irradiate the axilla according to the Amorous trial. So we, we, we take both on board for the clinical management. And this is a discussion within our tumor board, of course, in the multidisciplinary team, and together with the patient. In so itself, in side effects of the radiation therapy is, is really limited. So in patients that don't have clinically positive lymph nodes, you usually you don't do an axillary node dissection anymore? At all, no, no. And it's interesting to see the proportion of women who under, underwent uh, axillary clearance for their breast cancer treatment in the Netherlands Cancer Institute over the past 20 years. 20 years ago it was 80%, nowadays it's 3%. That's what it is, 3 Oh, I'm so sorry. Though this, in our institute, um, we have looked at the proportion of women who got an axillary clearance in the treatment of their breast cancer, and 20 years ago it was 75 or 80 percent, and now it's 3 percent. Why is that? Because of the central node, because of the radiation therapy, because of the new adjuvant chemotherapy. So in our institute, an axillary clearance is a rare operation for our residents they have to go to the melanoma doctors for, to, to learn their uh, axillary clearance. In breast cancer, it's really rare in our environment. Oh, yeah, and uh, I didn't say that the occurrence of lymph node metastasis remains totally the same in 1% a year. It doesn't change at all. And this is really the beauty of this, yeah. this sort of de-escalation in, in therapy where you're, you're, you're improving the morbidity of our patients. Our patients have a better quality of life because they don't have as much lymphedema without compromising their outcomes. The chance of them having a local recurrence is very low. So taking 20 and 30 and sometimes 40 lymph nodes out that we used to do, we don't need to do anymore. We would radiate the appropriate patients and, um, and again, their local recurrence rate is very, very low. Nick Mulcahy, Medscape. Um, Dr. Kakamani, if you were to write the conclusion to this study for the publication, well, what would the two or three sentences be? Um, not being a surgeon, um, hmm. I, uh, I, I'll still venture to, to, to do this. I, to me, it's, it's the fact that you are avoiding axillary um, dissections. You're, you're decreasing the risk of lymphedema. And at the same time, you're not compromising the outcomes of the patients. The patients are still going to live the same and will have a very low risk of recurrence. You have to find the right patients. If you have a patient that comes in and has a bulky lymph node, uh, and that's not a patient that was included in any of these studies. But the majority of patients that we see with breast cancer have these small metastases uh, to their axillas if they do. And in those cases, doing radiation instead of doing uh, more surgery or not doing anything is very appropriate. Okay, and then one last question, if I may. Um, what's, what's current practice in the United States? What are people doing you know, out at uh, various centers? And I actually would like to, to get the, uh, the European approach as well. And I'll talk about my experience. It's, it's, been, it's been very slow. In, 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 in changing our standard, which has been axillary node dissection. And it's longer follow-ups from Z11, from Amaro's, that are helping our surgeons cut back on the amount of surgery that they're doing. So I've been surprised, because you know, these results are, you know, we've had these trials out for 10 years, and, and we still are doing more axillary node dissections than we should be doing. But I'd like to get um, everybody else's opinion and also get the European approach. Yeah, well, in, um, in Europe, there is also differences. Uh, for instance, in, in the UK, the trial is repeated to some extent. Um, uh, in our country, we adapted quite, 
but uh, swiftly this this principle mm -hmm. uh, in Germany as well. There, there, there is difference throughout, and because of the criticism I, I started off with, um, as I learned in, in in Asia, it's gradually more and more accepted as an indication. And uh, I would like to ask Frank, uh, Dr. Ficini, what's his opinion? Because you have some more broader idea right, in the U.S. As she pointed out, the results have been out for quite some time, but it's been a very slow adoption. At Are we talking about the Z11 results? Yeah, both. And Amaros. Amaros and Z11. Amaros okay. and Z11, both of them. And it's been a kind of a slow adoption. I'm from the Midwest. It's been very slow. slow slowly seeing the amount of axillary dissections going down and down through the years. I'm sorry. Slowly seeing the, the axillary dissection rates going down. It's been very slow. Taking off a toy of a surgeon is a difficult thing to do. <laughs> Taking what? A toy yeah. of a surgeon. A toy away from the surgeon. It, uh, and believe me, it's the same thing with medical oncologists and <laughs> chemotherapy. Yeah. 